Welcome back everyone. This week we have a few cool things to cover. You're not gonna wanna miss this. If you wanna check out how to DIY your own flow meter for under 15 bucks, this is gonna be the video for you. This week we're also gonna install the GHL Profilux 4 on the tank so we can start monitoring temperature, salinity, pH, and also start controlling a few very important things in the tank finally happy that the day has come to get ultimate controllability from the GHL Profilux 4. I'll be showing you guys very quick my initial thoughts, more importantly how to hook it up and calibrate your probes that come with it. One thing that's always drawn me to GHL is number one, they offer it in white, which as you guys see, I'm a big fan of the color white. The good thing with this Profilux 4, I can totally set it up with my iPhone, iPad. I don't need a laptop, I don't need Windows, none of that. So we're gonna be showing you guys how to do that, how simple it is. I think it's gonna be a great time to see and prove how easy this thing either is or isn't to program as this is gonna be my first controller that I've ever programmed. I've never laid my hands on any of them. So it'll be a good way to show you from someone that has zero experience with any controller to see really how easy it is to hook it up. I've already installed all four of the probes. Luckily my bash C sump actually comes with probe holders. So those are already mounted in the back. I brought all the wires here to the front just for the purpose of this video instead of setting it up inside my cabinet, I'm gonna set it up here. There's good lighting here, it's a lot easier to see than having it inside the cabinet. One of the first things you're gonna to have to do is familiarize yourself with the back of the controller. Here is where your probe sensors are gonna go. They're labeled here, so it's pretty easy. You can't really mess it up. And obviously your power here, 12 volt power supply goes here. And very briefly, the PEB is gonna be here. This is how the Profilux communicates to everything else it controls through PEB cables. I won't get into detail of the rest of it just because I don't want to confuse you. I want to keep it down to a minimum, uh, specifically just for the setting up purposes. We got power. There you go, she's coming to life. She's already singing. I don't know about you guys, but I just can't get over the fit and finish on this thing. There's actual aluminum on it. Going with the white and the blue lighting. All four of the probes are in the corresponding slots you can see here. The next thing to do is gonna be setting up its personal hotspot as well as connecting it to your home Wi-Fi just so you can connect it to the cloud if ever you're not at home. What you guys are seeing me do here is actually hook it up via my phone. I downloaded the GHL app and then setting up the hotspot as well as getting it connected to the cloud. If you guys do wanna see a detailed video on that, I highly urge you to check out GHL's video. They go into a lot of detail. I just didn't think you guys would wanna see me go through that whole process in this specific video. Once you're done programming it, as you guys just saw, the last thing is gonna to be to calibrate your probes. The only one that doesn't need to be calibrated is the temperature, uh, but you have the rest of them. You have the solutions here to calibrate them. One thing I didn't mention earlier, the only ones that need to be temperature, I guess acclimated if that's what you want to call it, or brought up to your tank temperature is the 50 micro semen fluid. All the others can be left at room temperature. You don't have to worry about it. Here comes the fun part and this is the actual calibration. Now, one thing that was very interesting to me, um, and I'm not sure why GHL does this like this is, at least from what I found out, you cannot calibrate any of the probes via your phone. This may be a safety feature so you don't accidentally hit it and then throw off the calibration on your app. It's something that can be done very simple on the Profilux itself. There's a calibration menu and then you go through each individual probe as well as fluid. It was very intuitive as the Profilux 4 tells you exactly what you gotta add and then it beeps when it's done to put the next solution. So I do have to say, even though you couldn't do it on the app itself, do it in the controller was actually really easy. A few moments later. Just powered up the great white skimmer. I wanna say this is my first DC pump ever. We all know when you're breaking in a pump, a skimmer, you have to kind of run them wide open because at the beginning they're not gonna skim very well till you break it in. The good thing with this being DC, I'm able to run it at the lowest setting so we don't get what we tend to see on AC skimmers when you're breaking them in and they start overflowing with bubbles. This way I'm able to break in the skimmer itself without having it overflow. It looks really good as far as I can see. One thing I'm already noticing, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but the very fine bubbles, uh, that's already a good sign. Uh, compared to my AC version from what I can see right now, just with a few minutes I've been running it, I already love the, uh, the bubble production on this one. But only time will tell. We'll see in a few weeks, and obviously once we have fish in here and coral, how exactly it does long term. 
This past week, I wanted to check what the flow was actually going to my pax bellum, as there is an optimal range that you do need to operate it at. So I know there's a few companies that do sell inline flow meters. I could have certainly got the GHL one, hooked it up in line. The problem becomes on a setup like mine, everything's pretty compact. There really isn't a lot of space to put a flow meter. Most flow meters I've seen, especially the GHL one, it's a good at least five inches, if not a little bit longer, just for their total span. And if you look at my system, it'd be very hard, if not near impossible, to install one. Not to mention, if I'm trying to monitor or check the flow out of a manifold, guess what? It needs to be after the manifold, which that for sure was a no-go due to space. So the next best thing was Amazon, like always. I'll have a link in the description, but I saw that there's an actual flow meter that you can install to your hose to check how much flow is coming out with a little bit of math and a timer, it's very simple to figure it out. Now, I do want to put a disclaimer out there. I wouldn't trust this to leave it on the tank just for the purposes of salt water, not sure what it would do to it. I looked at the internals, most of them look to be made of plastic, so it might work long-term, but again, it's something that's very easy to install and remove. I'd honestly just rather, once you're done with your testing, rinse it out and then put it away. Another great thing I did like about this is it was around $15. You heard right, $15. So it's very inexpensive, very small. And with a few PVC adapters on either end, I was able to get hose barbs and then run silicone tubing. So then I can actually hook it up directly to my manifolds. So checking the flow is very easy. Make sure it is zeroed out as it is. Then it's a matter of turning on the flow. You can see it already counting. So if I was actually doing a test with this, it's very simple. Run a test for one minute, you times whatever the value is by 60, and then obviously that'll give you the flow for that full hour. Because again, you ran the test for one minute, you just time that value by 60, will give you the full hour. You can see there's no mess, there's no splash. On the other end, I put the PVC hose to go inside the sump so I can actually test flow on the output nozzle itself, which is gonna be by far the most accurate. Now I know what you guys are saying, so how can you test the output flow going into your tank? Well, that's very simple. In this scenario, I would remove the end piece, just leaving the ball joint exposed. And surprisingly enough, this three inch inner diameter silicone will fit right over that half inch ball joint. Actually perfectly. So all I would do is attach it to one side, get the same reading for one minute, times it by 60, then times that number by two because obviously there's two returns in my setup and that'll give me my total return right at the output. Because another thing I figured out when you're running the inline ones, the inline ones are really never at your output source. It would be somewhere along this line, which to me personally wouldn't be the best number to get because again, the water still has to travel up and then go out the output nozzle. So if you guys do want a setup like this, you can totally change these hose and have them adapt to smaller or bigger tubing. You could have it on the fly, check your readings, remove it, put it away for another time you do have to utilize it. More importantly, under 15 bucks, I think it's something we all gotta have. So if you guys do wanna check this out, I'll have a link in the description for you to take a look at it. A few moments later. One of the last things to cover is gonna be a quick update on the quarantine tank. As you guys can see, all the fish are still alive including the mollies, they've actually grown quite big as you're seeing them here. It's been so cool to watch them grow up. I really can't wait to add them to the main tank, but just very happy to see them thriving, eating, and getting bigger and bigger by the day. Starting off with the blue tang, that one never showed any signs of anything. He's been looking good from day one, or she, I really don't know if it's a male or female. The fox face, that one again hasn't really showed any signs at all from day one, so uh, really nothing to report on that one. Now with the yellow eye, Coltang, you could see uh, him in the back. He started with something very interesting towards the top of the dorsal. Decreased in size, also the little fungal or whatever infection it was or anything, I really don't know what it was, has completely disappeared. Now with the cell fin, again, I don't know if it was velvet at the beginning, what I thought was coming out, but that's long gone and looking very nice and healthy. As far as the calendar is concerned, today is Saturday the second, and you guys are probably seeing this on Sunday the third. So we really have two days left for the quarantine process to be done. 
Now, a few of you guys recommended in the previous updates I've done on the quarantine that you guys recommend I at least leave the fish with lower copper levels, probably 1.5, for at least a full week. Uh, monitor them, make sure everything's still good, which means we'd probably be able to add them on day 11 or 12. I figure we've gone this long, what's an extra week? It's better to be safe than sorry, right? Grab a quick pinch of food. Now believe it or not, this has become one of my favorite things to do. Watching these guys eat is really something that's so joyful to me. It's just really cool to see them grub down on food. Watch all that food disappear. They're like, they're all magicians in here. Even the mollies, you can see them going nuts over the food. Originally when I put them all in here, I'm not gonna lie, I thought they were gonna eat the mollies. And I think one of them nipped at one and accidentally killed it because they were just a lot smaller. But after that, one that they accidentally killed, They've all been doing great. And you can see all, all those pellets are completely gone. Generally speaking, pellets are a little bit harder to get fish eating, but as you see these guys, by the end of the quarantine, they're completely devouring the pellets. So that's gonna be it guys for this week's update. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. More importantly, hopefully you guys learned something new. Remember, if you guys do wanna check out that DIY flow meter, be sure to check it out in the description below. I have a link for you guys to look at that. Also, if you guys are interested in purchasing your own GHL controller or any other GHL products such as the KHD or the highly anticipated Ion Director, I have a link for you guys to check those out in the description. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment box below. I thank each and every one of you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.